This is uh, Barbara Slavin at the Morse Institute Library. We're interviewing Francis uh, X. Cutler, who calls himself Frank. May I ask you uh, how old you are? 80. Okay. And your marital status? 57 years. Great. Do you have any children? Yes. Yeah. How many? Three. Yeah. And may I ask you where you were born? Boston. Yeah. Brighton, actually. Yeah. Brighton. And when did you move to Natick? After the war. And how, how did you? How did you happen to move to Natick? Uh, my in-laws were living there in Natick. Yeah. Yeah. What is your family background? In what capacity? Well, uh, ethnic, um, Irish, Irish, Italian, British. Whatever, yeah. Because yeah. uh, we, in fact, one of the nephews is doing jeans. Yeah. And uh, a family landed in Watertown in 1636. Wow. Yeah, he's doing the jeans, which is nice. Yeah, 1636 or something like that. Wow. Yeah. So you're an old family. That's great. Yeah. See, he sent all the stuff to us and everything, oh. which is nice. It's wonderful. When and where did you enter the military? In Boston. Yeah. And when would that be? Oh, 1943. You went to August of 1943. And what branch did you join? Navy. Mm -hmm. And why did you choose the Navy? Because I had already been in the Civilian Conservation Corps and I saw what, how the Army lived. How did they live? <laughs> Rough. <laughs> so I didn't do it then. How did you happen to join, just jumping back in time, um, you, you were in the Civilian Conservation Corps? Yes. And what, what did you do for them? We built roads. Yeah. I was in uh, Colorado, yeah. and uh, we built roads and stuff like that, you know. That's great. You know. Getting back to the Navy, when, uh, what was your basic training like? Well, I, I really didn't need training because I was already a machinist. Mm -hmm in Grant Gearworks in South Boston for uh, four or five years. Mm -hmm. And that's why when, when, you know, when they interview you, you know, machinists right away, they needed you. Yeah. I didn't get a rate right away. It took a while, you know, but, uh, and, uh, you know, but they sent you where they needed you. That's why we were all over the place. Yeah. So you really had no basic training to speak of? or. No. No, it just put you right, right to work? Yeah, because we had the experience. Yeah. See, and I was in the ship repair unit, and uh, you knew what it was all about, you know, the engines and right. everything, you know. So. Yeah. Did you develop any uh, close friendships during that, that period of your early days? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yeah. God forbid they're all gone now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you went in fairly well trained, but did, did they give you advanced training beyond what you already knew? Oh yes, knew? we had to go to school. We yeah. worked at night on the ships, mm -hmm. and we went to school in the daytime. This was in Staten Island, right. New York. We went to school in the daytime, and we worked on sub chases right. out of uh, Staten Island, repairing the engines, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That was school for us, like, you mm -hmm. know. And they were sub chasers. Yes, yeah. Out of New York, out of Staten Island. Right. And then we had the British there too. We had the Corsairs. I think it was Corsairs. Is that what they are? Well, they were Canadian ships, anyhow. Yeah. Corvettes. Corvettes. Yeah. yeah. We repaired the, theirs, yeah. theirs too. For How the Canadian. Yeah. How did you like those days? Very much. So. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very interesting. Did you uh, run into different sorts of people than you were used to in Brighton? Uh, uh, yes, people from they, different you know, cultural backgrounds. They came from, uh, like some came from Brighton High, which I, I yeah. didn't know them because I yeah. went to Boston Trade School, and I didn't know them. But we got together. It was great. We had a great group. Yeah. Did the military prepare you for the cultural differences of different kinds of people you'd be running into? More or less, yeah. If you found somebody didn't like you, just ignored them. Right. So you yeah. know you bypassed them. Yeah. You know. 
and they were there. <laughs> From uh, after your time in Staten Island, uh, where did you go? I uh, right to San Diego. Mm -hmm. I re a school yeah. in San Diego. And from there, you went to, uh, they call it Port Wainimi. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, that's like a Mexican name, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to school in the evening, and we worked on the engines, mostly landing crafts. Mm -hmm. And we built docks, you know, landing mm -hmm. craft docks, like where they, they, they dropped them in the water, and yeah. then tanks could go use them, you know, putting them all together. School. When you went to California, did you go alone or as a group? Oh, we went as a group. Mm -hmm. Grow Pack 11, they called it. What do group they call it? Pacific. Grow Pack 11. Group Pacific. Okay. Group Pacific 11. Grow Pack yeah. 11. We had everything. Carpenters, mm -hmm. machinists, mm -hmm. mechanics. Mm -hmm. We had everything. And after your, how did you enjoy your California days? Very good. In fact, uh, my baby was born while I was in Newport, yeah. you know, boot training. And uh, so her, her mother said, why don't you go with him? So she came when we transferred to Dago, from San Diego to Port Noinimi. She came out there and stayed with me probably five months or something, I forget how much time, which was nice. Oh, you know, yeah. was, I had a good mother-in-law, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual. <laughs> yes, it's true. Uh, after that, yeah. where did you go? After that, we went to uh, Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. and we repaired any landing crafts that were in tough shape and went to school during the day. Now, what year would this be that you were in Pearl Harbor? That's been 40. Three. Oh, okay, so it was. Yeah, 43. Then we left there. It was funny. We left there, went to the Admiralty Islands, mm -hmm. which is Manus, right. which he remembers too. And that's where they had a lot of uh, boats, landing craft boats that were in tough shape, damaged. So we stayed there six months just repairing those. Mm -hmm. The only bad part about that was we were on the equator. How it was, was the weather? Hot. Oh, I was just going to yeah, ask. Yeah, it was hot. I mean, you know, didn't wear any shirts or anything like that, you know. And uh, enjoyed it. Then from there, they sent us to uh, back to Pearl. And on the way, we we picked up a, a ship, the USS Jason. It was a repair ship. And while we were underway, we worked on engines and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then they took us to Pearl, mm -hmm. and we landed there, would you believe, Christmas Eve. Oh. And of course, we were taken out of and it made us just look like Chinese. We were so yellow. He remembers it, Bobby, out of And uh, we get in there, and they're having a big party, you know. And these are the fellows that left behind, the same group, right. Grow Pack 11. Some of them didn't even recognize us. We had just come out, you know, from the Pacific, in the, the you know hundred degrees, right. <laughs> they didn't recognize us at all. But we stayed there and repaired ships and made docks. Uh, I don't know what they call. You know what they call those? You put them all together and they become a dock. They carried them on the sides of Elmer's Tees. Yeah, yeah. And and when they got near the shores, they assembled. They would blow bolts and drop them in the water. Yeah. Well, we, we, we worked on those, you know, fix, put those together, interlocking them and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. In fact, the afterwards, they used them for landing on the, uh, on the islands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was all metal, you know, interlocking like, you know. And uh, that's what they used them for afterwards, you know. I missed something. Uh, I didn't quite get why you were yellow. Uh, from taking adabrin. And what is that? A, a malaria disease. Oh, okay. Prevent malaria. But it makes you turn yellow. Oh, I yeah. believe it, yeah. yeah. 
Aside, when you were in the Admiralty Islands, aside from the, uh, how hot the weather is, could you tell me what it was like in terms of the terrain, the vegetation? And and it, there was no, well, there was, was vegetation there yeah. because we had a captain mm -hmm. of the island and he had the group go into the jungle and bring out rare flowers. He had the best garden in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And I, I forget his name, but he was, let's go, we go in the jungle and get all the different flowers and bring them out, you know. And he had the best, but he was a real mean guy. He had <laughs> Quonset huts that you couldn't stand up in. And that was, you know, when you did anything wrong, that's where he put you. Another thing he did was you get buckets of sand and walked and walked. This was the punishment. Buckets of sand you carried around all day. Was that um, punishment? But is that um, within the Navy guidelines to do oh, that? No, that was him. Yeah. A certain captain, you know. I mean, it sounds like cruel and unusual punishment. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. But you're in the armed services, so. Yeah. What, what kind of clothes did you wear? Very cocky. Yeah. And then we afterwards we got greens, mm -hmm. like the Seabees had, yeah. you know, yeah. But you see, I had learned a lot of this in the CCCs. Right. You know, so uh, I was prepared. I wasn't green, you know, <laughs> so. Uh, after um, you went to um, Pearl Harbor for the second time, where did you go after that? After Pearl? Oh, we got set up for the invasion of Iwo Jima. Right. Yeah. And Getting shots yeah. and all that. And did and you know? Training. Did you know that you were going to invade Iwo Jima? No, you didn't know until after you got off the beach when you, you know, probably about three or four days before the invasion. So what did you think you were doing? You just doing? didn't think. You yeah. just knew you were going to the Pacific? Yes, oh yeah, yeah. again, yeah. you know, yeah. So how was the, uh, the boat ride over? Uh, I don't mind, I just, <laughs> just the, uh, and he can probably tell you that too. Yeah. First thing in the morning, you get a ride up and find a spot where you can play cards, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and. Uh, there weren't that many get seasick either. Yeah. I was amazed, you know. So aside from playing cards, what else did you do in your free time on the boat on the way over? Wrote letters. Yeah. A lot of writing. Yeah. And dreaming, you know. Yeah. Where are we going? Yeah. What's it going to be like? You know, yeah. all that, you know. Did you find that the men were apprehensive about what they were going to do? Yeah, well, we knew what we had to do. I mean, as far as repairing engines and ships. We knew, you know, once we got on the island. Mm -hmm. But when we went, we were attached to the 4th Marine Division. And uh, we couldn't, they aborted us. You know, we tried to land a couple of times and aborted because see, it was all volcanic ash. Mm -hmm. And it was like water. You know, you walk five feet, uh, you know, we were carrying water jugs. Huh? Mm -hmm five feet and you'd slide back too. Mm. Because, of the, it was, well, it's worse than sand, because sand would pack, but this is volcanic ash. And, uh, Could you tell me about the moment that you uh, first realized you were going to be invading Iwo Jima? It was, uh, well, first thing is make sure you got enough food. Right. You know, <laughs> I had an extra sea bag. Mm -hmm. In fact, I met a cook on the ship that was taking us there. He came from Boston, and he had just cut his hand so he, he couldn't go ashore. And he baked me five, van, uh, let's see, loaves of bread, Vienna bread. Oh. And I was on the island, and slice for you. <laughs> see, we had five guys that were been going earmarked for water distillation. See, there was no water on the island. Yeah. So we had gone to a school, evaporators school. Yeah for making water. So that's why they attached it to the 4th Marines, because they're about the third group in, I think, the Marines. It's because they took us right to the boat base, and they called it, where we set up to make water, drinking water, mm -hmm. you know. 
and uh, we had to go around the clock, you know, watching the meters and all that, you know, see, so make sure the meters are running right, because mm -hmm. it was all evaporation, see. The heat makes it like condensation, and then that drips down, and that's where your water was. What was the invasion like overall? Were you involved in the heat of it? Oh yeah, we had a we had our foxholes and everything else yeah. we had, yeah. And how we long right at the base of yeah. right at the base of the mountain, uh, Mount Surabachi, right? Yeah. yeah. Mount Surabachi. Yeah. That's where they put us first. Yeah. See. They took all our rifles away because we didn't need them, you know. But then they gave they gave them back to us, you know. And why did they give them back? Because we know we thought we need them. <laughs> I wonder why they took them away. Well, I don't know. They took mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff away from us. You know, the stuff you use when you get hurt. Uh, what is it? The dope stuff. You know, they shoot into your arms if you had a cut or something like that. They took all that away from us. You know, that was in our pack. How long did the invasion last? <laughs> it's funny, it was only supposed to last 72 hours. Yeah. Oh my cripe. It was, we were still, well, I spent, uh, my group, nine months on five square miles. You know, now five square miles, just go out here and measure right. two and a half by two and a half and you've right. got five square miles. And that's how big the island was. But, it was embedded with Japs. The whole they had tunnels, they had everything. They had railroad tracks mm -hmm. in the island. I said, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, something. You know, they were they were coming out a month later, mm -hmm. not knowing that they had lost. You know, not knowing that they had lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you find you had to engage in combat with the Japanese? We had to, and uh, a couple of times, this was after the invasion, we had raids. Because see, we had the water. And of course, they, were, they had no water. So when they knew that the water was there, that we were making it, you know, they'd come. And it was funny how you knew, because I don't know if he remembers, they had sneakers and their big toe was separate. Oh. It was separate. You know, it was, it was just, you know, like your thumb and a glove. Right. And that's how you knew they were there at nighttime, because you'd see their prints. They were oh. trying to get water. And that's why they gave us our rifles back, you know? Because, and that was kind of yeah. scary, you yeah. know? You're in the dark there with the little flashlight trying to check the meters, making sure they're running right. See, we had. They were like a Chrysler engine with the evaporators in them. Mm -hmm. And they were made right here in Boston, downtown Boston. Badger Company yeah. made them. And once we got them set up, and then we had to put hoses uh, to them, the, you know, the fire hose that they have inside of the fire trucks, those big ones. We had to set those up and put them in the, in the ocean mm -hmm. to suck the water up to evaporate. Mm -hmm. And one day we were there, we were digging a, a trench to put the hose in. Who comes by but Nimitz? Admiral oh. Nimitz, yeah, oh, geez. Him and his troops checking yeah. out the area and everything, you know. And uh, five minutes after he left, we had a raid. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like as if they didn't know, huh? How did he impress you? Oh, he was, he was a great guy. He just. I mean, I just we just saw him say hi to us. How are you doing? And all that yeah. was all, you know. Because he had the, he had a lot of the brass with him naturally, you know. Mm -hmm. They were checking see those, what they call a boat basin. It was there before we even got there, and it was uh, any ships that were damaged were in there, and that's where we found all these landing crafts mm -hmm. to repair. We, that's where we repair them. Then they have a little typhoon or something, and went, <laughs> up goes the boat, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, really interesting, really. In general, do you feel that the officers um, that you had gave good leadership? There were some, yeah. We had one. 
No, actually, there was two. Christensen was his name. Mm -hmm. And you know where they worked? John Hancock in Boston. Yeah. Oh, yeah? And Polk. Yeah. They both came from Brookline. Mm -hmm. And they, and I came from Brighton. You think they did a little, nothing. So I was getting ready to take my wife home. Mm -hmm. This was afterwards. Uh, no, it wasn't afterwards, excuse me. It was, uh, we were going off. So naturally, take her home, right. and he wouldn't give me time to take her home. Oh. But all the foul balls, the tattoos, they all got weekends. <laughs> they, they only went to L.A. You know, he wouldn't give me time. Oh. I'll never forget that guy for that. And then he had trouble too, because he wouldn't go on a ship because he was afraid of getting thrown over the side. <laughs> That's how bad he was, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he flew everywhere, you know. And Afraid so, that his men would throw him over? Oh, yes. And say it was an accident. Oh, yeah, that's how bad he was. <laughs> the, uh, that one time when we were getting ready to go on the evasion, uh, I went to him because I had no shovel. Yeah. Because you had to have a shovel to dig. Oh, no, no. We need the shovels for the other guys. I, they came a month later. They didn't need any shovels. Mm -hmm. You know, he wouldn't give me a shovel. And there I was with my helmet digging a foxhole because volcanic ash was like, you know, almost like water. And I'll never forget that guy. Polk and Christensen. Christensen wasn't as bad as Polk. Mm -hmm. But it's funny. And you know, one day I was, I used to work, I was with the Boston Fire Department. Mm -hmm. And I'd be coming from headquarters at Goodbye Hancock. Didn't I see him there? Ah, oh, you'd think he'd get out and say hi. No, no way, I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how bad he was. So most of the other officers were good, very good. Yeah. What would you say your greatest challenges were in Iwo Jima? Well, it was doing the uh, the night watch. Right. You never know. Mm -hmm. See, we had a dig down and get us off in there because we were, you know, we had to have our own rifles and everything like that. And you were like on guard duty or something, you know, that was it. Mm -hmm. In the morning, you know, you'd see everything clear and then you'd hear bing, 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 bing. Look around, there they are shooting at you from, oh. the, from the caves, you know, yeah. It was, uh, that was a challenge, really. What was the weather like in Iwo Jima? It was cold in the morning. You had to wear jackets. Mm -hmm. In the daytime, when the sun was out, it wasn't bad, you know. And was the whole island volcanic ash? No. Mm -hmm. The back part, one part, was all like rock. Yeah. That was the northern part of it. It was all rock. And that was the toughest part they took, you know, because uh, they had to get the flamethrowers and stuff like that to get them out of there, mm -hmm. you know. But they really, uh, they never knew they lost, I'll tell you that. They never, they really were something. Did you see any, um, in any time in the ser when you were in the service, did you uh, ever see any USO shows? Oh yeah, yeah. They, uh, we, in fact, we had uh, Bob Hope. Yeah. Yeah, we How was he? one time. He was great. Mm -hmm. He had a girl by the name of Williams was the dancer. Yeah. I don't know if your name. She was very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in uh, when that set up there thing, you know, you uh, get your chair and you get down there. You know, whoever was there first saw the show. You know, and uh, on this island in Manus Island, see, they made so much money. Uh, in the uh, PX, they call it PX, you know, selling stuff, that they get free beer. Yeah. Everybody get free beer at certain hours of the night, you know. Well, I never drank, so it didn't bother me. So I was a caretaker. Yeah. I'd have a table, and they'd just keep going around getting it two at a time, and I was the guard duty. I watched <laughs> it. Oh. <laughs> and then afterwards, they'd have the parties. <laughs> So how did you this find, cool. when you had free time, how did you find that you spent your time? Well, you didn't really. Yeah. You did your laundry or something like right. that, you know. And 
they, you know, they had movies, actually, you know. And that was dangerous, too. Why you were know. the... Well, because you... <laughs> they found Japanese guys watching the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Why were they watching the movies? Well, they didn't realize it. You know. They weren't captured. They were still prisoners. Right. But they'd wander, wander around. Right. In fact, the one group had Marine uniforms on. Japanese? Yeah, yeah. They had Marine uniforms uh, marching down. It was a raid, like, you know. Yeah. And uh, they finally captured them, you know. Yeah. But you never knew because, see, they were dug in so deep there. I don't believe it, how, you know, down deep they were. When you say it was dangerous to watch movies, you mean because you'd be caught off guard and the Japanese would yeah. take advantage? Okay. Yeah. You never know, because India had, you'd hear the air raids, you yeah. know. That was when they knew. When we'd see the uh, Black Widows go off, that was a double Mustang, like, right. uh, painted black, yeah. then you knew there was a raid coming. Because right. they were going to have to intercept them, right. you know. And, uh, we had a few of those, you know, really. Sirens going and all that, you know. That was when you hadn't went to a, I think at that time we were living in tents. <laughs> so. Did you have the bombs drop near you? Well, we had one big, yeah, couple there, because the holes were there, you know. The, yeah. uh, one big, well, it wasn't a raid. Well, it was uh, an ammunition dump. Yeah blew up right next to where we were, you know. I mean, you know, when a firecracker does, so this mm -hmm. is all ammunition. And uh, it blew up. They think the Japs did it, you know. Right. And uh, they just, uh, it wiped out a few things, you know. But uh, like I say, it was only five square miles, yeah. the island, that's all it was. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have many places to go, mm -hmm. you know. When you were on Iwo Jima, did you have good friends there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. They were from everywhere. They were from everywhere. Guy, good guys. Great. Great guys. And did you, after the, um, after the war was over, were you able to keep in touch with your friends? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, last year we had uh, a reunion of Iwo Jima. Yeah. Oh. In fact, some of the, you know, this is in uh, Las a Anna, yeah. in Las Vegas. Yeah. And because I brought my book with me, and they all brought books and everything. And there was quite a few of them, you know, well, I'd say five that I knew. But uh, they, were in a, they came after us, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? This group, after the invasion, they mm -hmm. came. And uh, I knew them, but. Uh, I wasn't that close with them like I was with the first group we went with, because yeah. we were together from uh, 1943 right on through the invasion and everything. How much did you actually know about uh, the Japanese before you went to Nothing. Iwo Jima? Okay. And what was your opinion of them after you Encountered Japanese as as a as an as enemy. An enemy, yeah. No, I wouldn't buy anything Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> Still don't. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Do you feel that you were properly equipped? Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned uh, what would you say your most memorable experience was? I think the, the raid we had when Admiral Nimitz left, because mm -hmm. that was in the daytime. Right. Yeah, and uh, it was, there was too many of our guys with rifles. Yeah. You know, because they couldn't, and that was an experience, you yeah. know, because we almost shot each other. Wow. You know, it was daytime, and you know, you know, and that was the raid, so. You mentioned something before, and I just wanted to bring it up again under a memorable experience, something about raising the flag on Mount Suribachi. Am I saying that correctly? Yes. Yeah. What, um, what do you remember about that? Well, when that happened, I was on the 
the bottom of the mountain at the time. That's where we were dug in. Mm -hmm. And uh, he can tell you the howitzers were going, you know, the yeah. over our heads. And then all hell broke out. There was every horn, every whistle, everything you could hear. What it was when the Marine put the flag up. Every horn, every ship in the <laughs> harbor, all went off at yeah. the same time. Yeah. yeah. It was very, very close. So you were in a combined operation with the Marines and you witnessed the Marines raise yeah, the we flag. Yeah, we were attached to the fourth. Right. I don't yeah. know who originally put it yeah. up there, but yeah. So how did you feel when you saw it yourself? Was it? Uh, I was this something. It was yeah. only because uh, I think we went in the, I forget what day they put it up. I don't know whether it was the fifth or sixth day after the invasion or what, something like that. And uh, it was it was really colorful, mm. you know. How did you um, hear about the war in the rest of the world while you were in the Pacific? Or did you hear about the war in, in the Atlantic? Oh yeah, we had all kinds, we had a newspaper on the island yeah. and it gave you all the information about yeah. Germany and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Regular newspaper yeah. put out by the island yeah. after we kept there. It, and when did you leave? How long were you in Iwo Jima? Nine months. And then what happened after? How did you happen to leave and where did you go after that? Well, we were getting ready for Japan. Right. They were giving us shots and you know all that stuff. And then thank God for Truman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the atom bomb, and yeah. really. And how did you hear about the uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Uh, oh, you mean the first part? Yes. Well, well on, the, on the ship, yeah. they finally told us where we were going, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, it was just, you know, that was the only reason why we knew that it was uh, Iwo Jima. You know. No, I mean, when you, uh, you said you were getting ready to go to the mainland and then Truman uh, obviously dropped the bombs. How yeah. did you hear about the bombs being dropped? Oh, we, had, we had radio R yeah. and newspaper, yeah. you know, the newspaper they printed. Yeah. And yeah. what did you think when you heard it? You were, wouldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. The, in fact, um, my wife mentioned something yesterday about it. Yeah something, you know, about what we did mm. at the time. Well, of course, everybody went around and got drunk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they were to a summon pints of, oh, quarts of liquor. Yeah. Or fifty dollars or anything, because I never drank, so it didn't bother me either <laughs> way. You know, and uh, that was the only way they could celebrate, right. the guys, you know. Yeah. And then uh, Truman, you know, did the job, I'm telling you. And we'd probably be still out there. Yeah. How they were dug in so bad. Yeah. Even the mainland. We I got to Japan three days after they signed this peace treaty, because yeah. I hadn't had to leave in over two years. Yeah. So there was a plane going there. So they said, "Hey, get on it," you know, and. No, no parachutes, nothing. You just get on the bench and sat there. Right. But we were only 600 miles, you know. And when we landed, they had just got two bomber there about a week before. Where, so there was all these craters holes, you know. Where was this? In this Tok was in Tokyo, Tokyo? itself. Yeah, yeah. Akasugi right. Airdrome, yeah. and uh, you know you're bouncing all over the place. So but what was Japan it, like? Japan was, you were. Uh, you were still the enemy. They were still walking around. Of course, they got all their rifles and all that right. stuff, but you were still leery of them, yeah. you know? When they'd walk by you and down, you know? We found one kid, this was about three of us together, one kid that could speak English, mm -hmm. and he took us everywhere, you know, to the places, you know? In fact, we went into, we couldn't get any rooms. They had a hotel there, too. And uh, you were, for a package of cigarettes, you could stay overnight, oh. you know. But there was no room, so we found a, he took us to a, a bank. And of course, you, can, you know that they had just left because their sacks 
they carried in, the women carried those bags and all that, were still there. So we just slept there for the night. I'm, um, um, I'm kind of. It sounds like the army, the, the navy, left you mm -hmm. left you to your own devices uh, in terms of places to sleep. Well, we see we were a, a unit all by ourselves. Yeah. See, we didn't have any facilities. Okay. You had to make them, uh, steal them, either one. You know what I mean? And facilities. What, what were your responsibilities in when you were in the mainland, Japan? Oh, it was just a leave. Oh, that was leave. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, five day leave. Okay. Because we hadn't had any leave over two okay. years and no supervision. Right. No. And after that leave was over, what did you do? We went right back to Iwo Jima. Oh, okay. Yeah. You were on your, you know, we were flying. You could see, <laughs> you could see the cow, almost rubbed the cow's right. back. Uh. They were flying so low. You look in the pilot, it was a, he was a sergeant, he yeah. wasn't a lieutenant or anything. Yeah. <laughs> so after Iwo Jima, where did you go? Uh, we left there and uh, came home to uh, San Francisco. Right. Got to San Francisco and then uh, after that we, we got, a, got a ship that, no it was a carrier, yeah. took us to Frisco from there. We had a train. We took a train home, yeah. you know. And I was talking with my son, who was he was born while I was in there, and he said, "I want an ice cream, ice cream." This is December twenty fourth or somewhere. He wanted an ice cream. And anyway, I'm coming down the street, <laughs> walking down the street. I I didn't even think to ask anybody to drive me, carrying an ice cream from. Him. Uh -huh. <laughs> and there he was up in the you know the, the, he was living upstairs in the mother in law's house, uh -huh. and. Uh, there he was up there with his robe on, me bringing him an ice cream. You know, it's quite a reunion. When were you uh, discharged from the army? You mean from the navy? Uh, I mean the navy. I'm sorry. November. Uh, wait a minute. Maybe December twenty, or something like that. I don't have the exact. I should have it. But I don't have it. Mm -hmm. That was at the Figo Building. Yeah. In, in Boston. I go building. And what were the feelings of your uh, your family when you returned? How were you treated? Oh, we were treated good. Yeah. In fact, there was five of us in the family. The five boys are on the service. Yeah. Same time. I have a snapshot of the five of us. There was little parties here and parties there, you know, reunions and stuff, you know. And how do you feel now about the war effort, the the World uh, War Two? Oh, uh, we had to, you had right. to do it. You had to, you had to be there. Yeah. That was all. I mean, there was no way of bypassing it. They would have. Whew, you can imagine. I I couldn't imagine. You know. Because when you even see some of these old movies, how these the Germans had those rockets, oh my crap, and they had smart people there. But if they had kept going, they would have wiped England right out. But I don't know if we got it, could have got any more allies. I think the Russians are very good to us. How do you feel about the difference in the way, let's say, Vietnam veterans were treated when they returned and the way uh, you were treated when you returned? Some of the Vietnam veterans well, weren't treated as well, might not have been treated as well. I know, because well. to us that wasn't even a war. We shouldn't, they shouldn't have even been there. Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, I, don't, I don't have anything uh, against them at all, none of them. All it's right. just that they. They don't seem to want to join the Legion and different things. They don't want to join. Mm. I don't know why. Did you uh, uh, take advantage of the GI Bill when you returned? Oh, yeah, yeah. on a house. Yeah, oh, excellent. <clears throat> and how about school? Did you use it for no, school? No, I didn't because, I, like I say, I was working in a machine shop. Right. I went right back to the machine shop. Yeah. But I know that they're trying to get them diplomas. Oh, right. the ones who forced to leave high school. Yeah, because yeah, I, I left 
and I went right into the CCCs. Mm -hmm. Now I was supposed to graduate in '39, and uh, there was ten of us in the family, and so the government sent twenty-five dollars to your house, and you got five dollars, and that paid the rent. <laughs> so, uh, you mean you didn't finish high school? No. Oh, you went to the, the war before you finished high school. Yeah. Oh, so you're part of that group. You have to find out about yeah. it. You know, the uh, thirty-nine. I, well, I tried to get into the navy when we were in uh, Colorado, and they, you had to have your mother, father's consent. Right. So they refused us. This is the group that the five five of us that were in the CCCs together yeah. from Boston. Yeah. Is there any thought or memory uh, you'd like to share with uh, the community or future generations who might be looking at this tape? Just that, you know, just, I don't know, uh, not take advantage, but, you know, the stuff is there, use it. Right. You know, the schooling and all that, they yeah. should definitely use it. And any uh, thoughts about uh, war or combat or whatever that you'd like to share? I don't know. I just like a lot of guys, they just don't want Because you get together once in a while, you guys, you know, talk about it, you know. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Just if it happens, you'd go right back in. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add uh, that you feel I should have asked you or you'd like I to add? Know. Well, well, it's been a wonderful, a wonderful interview. <laughs> and I want to thank, thank you, you for thank you for coming in here and uh, spending your, your time thank you, yeah. with us. I really appreciate it.